For this example, we're going to take a look at the dband plugin from Sapphire Plugins. It's more of a utility tool, uh, but it's a very, very useful plugin, especially those of you working in 8-bit or broadcast space, where oftentimes you'll get uh, banding with certain gradients. So let's go ahead and zoom in here just to show you in this example, we have a pretty extreme case of banding, yet the plugin is doing a really good job of getting rid of this, or it will do a really good job of getting rid of this without affecting the, any of the edges of the source area. So I'm going to start by just applying my banding, or uh, D-band plugin rather, go to the Sapphire Effect palette, uh, select D-band, and by default it's just doing a little bit of a pixel diffusion, nothing too, too heavy here. Uh, we need to do a couple settings here. Uh, the nice thing about this effect is it doesn't have too many parameters, but all of them end up being really useful, and I'm going to go through most of these step by step to show you how to get a really nice D-banded image, um, even with something as severe as what you've got in this example here. Uh, the first thing I want to do is go to my show option. I'm just going to zoom in here to show you this option. And what this lets me do is it lets me look at not only the results, but the edges as well. So I'm going to switch this from results to edges. And as I zoom out, you'll see that uh, it's basically looking at what the plugin is seeing here. Every single white area of the image is where the plugin is finding an edge. But it's also really smart about determining what's a typically a banded edge versus a source edge. And by doing this, um, we can actually start to pull out some of the banded areas without really affecting any of the source areas that we don't want to do a deband to. So to go ahead and start to pull these edges out, we've got what's called the edge threshold. And I'll just show you that real quickly here. I can go ahead and actually start to take up my edge threshold. And as I pull this value up, it's going to start to pull away all of those banded white areas. But you can see, again, the plugin is a really good algorithm for determining uh, a banded edge versus a source edge. So I just should take this up a little bit more here. It's basically pulled away all of those heavy white areas that we had here, but it's left intact the source edges here. Um, the option beneath that I don't necessarily use as much, but just to point that out, that's the grow edges. So that's going to blur out the uh, non-affected edges a little bit more. If you want to do a little bit more preservation on that, you can see as I do that, it's slowly growing the, uh, those edges. Um, so once I've done this, I basically set the area of of definition to be debanded with the plugin. So then I can go back and I can turn my show option back to my result. And I'll zoom in here to show you it hasn't really done a whole lot. Again, by default, it's doing a little bit of pixel diffusion. But by going ahead and setting your edges, you can actually, you've defined a region for the plugin to work within. So once you've done that, then it's time to start doing the debanding. And this is done by adding blur and then diffusion. So the first thing I usually tend to do is add my pre-blur here. And the pre-blur is the layer of blur that's applied first. Uh, and again, it's only applied to the banded areas. So you can start to sort of eyeball this, and as I turn up the pre-blur here, it's going to start, again, just to smooth out those banded areas. It's only doing a blur on our, uh, our banded areas. And again, I'll just uh, take this from 11 here. I'm just going to zoom in to show you. It's already starting to get better. And then I've done this, and then I can start adding some pixel diffusion. So I've got the pixel diffuse radius here. And pixel diffuse radius is just increasing my, uh, my radius of pixel diffusion. But again, it's only doing that on those areas of the image where there's banding. So I'm going to start to take it up. And I'm going to take it up really high beyond what's useful in this case, just to show you all of this pixel diffusion in here is only going on within the areas where there's banding. It's not really spilling over that much into my source edges. So I'm going to start to take this way down and just look for a more reasonable uh, result here. Just again, more of a smooth, gradual pixel diffusion between... Um, between my areas of banding. So I've done that. Let's take it down a little bit here. It looks about right. And then I'm going to go and add my last layer of blur, and that's the post blur. So the post blur is applied um, on top of the pixel diffusion, which is on top of the pre blur. So I go ahead and start to start to turn my post blur, and it's now adding another layer of blur, and it's smoothing out that banding. But again, it's only ever working in the areas where the source image, um, the source edges are, are, are not affected. So I want to go back and, and show you here uh, my before and after results just really quickly. And you can see it's done a pretty good job of getting rid of those banded areas without affecting any of my source edge. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. And again, just show you that. That's my, that's my before. And then I'll go ahead and turn it on and show you my after. And it's pretty impressive for the, uh, for the quick work it's done to remove any areas of banding but not affecting my source edges. Uh, so that is the D-band plugin for you.